so long since the shady ladies were here, but we're back, 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 back again. Oh, here to talk. Tens, 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 tens across the, the board. For RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, are you tired from All Stars 3? Well, have too a seat. Ba- too bad. <laughs> Fre- let me freshen your drink and get ready for season 10 because it's here, bitch. And the train isn't stopping. No, the RuPaul's Drag Race train does not stop when there's oh, money involved. None at all. Ah. Uh, I'm Samir Roy. You may have just heard my voice a very short time ago, but I still am a co-host and contributing editor at Gambit Magazine, joined once again... Oh, wait, no, it's a different person. What? No, I'm different? I'm <laughs> That's how much time has passed? I know. Light years? <laughs> How no. this presidency has aged us. <laughs> it's, it's, it's aged Charles Barkley and myself. <laughs> Margot Poupard coming back again after, oh, the briefest of breaks between <laughs> one season ending and a new beginning. It's such a refreshing hiatus. <laughs> oh, goodness. I feel like we've had maybe cumulative eight hours of sleep between... <laughs> I think so. Between one season ending and another beginning. But here we are again to talk about the queens and... Before we start talking about them, the new workroom. Yeah, I I like the look of it. I hear, I've been hearing some grumbling online about the look. Or, really? How dare? I don't know why. I like it. I think it was kind of well overdue for a little makeover. It needed a new look, you know? like A little freshening up. Ten years old girl needs a little... I'm like, and how different really is it? Needs just, some fillers and a new paint job. Yeah, they just put some more shit on the walls. <laughs> kinda, I feel like they knocked down some walls. It looked bigger. like Or at least like there was more space. We'll be able to tell more. Uh, uh, we'll be able to oh, better you, tell what. Are you it's trying to say like. that the small pictures on Entertainment Weekly were not of satisfaction to you, no. discerning what this workroom looks like, or like the tiny snippets that we saw in the trailers that we've been getting uh, building up to this season? It's been a very short ramp up. <laughs> They didn't have any time. (laughs) They didn't even give themselves time. They had to, like, build it up while they're also building up, like, the finale of All-Stars 3. It was very weird. I'm like, I wonder why they didn't want to give the audience any breathing room between the seasons. Like, are they trying to, like, like, they didn't want to give us time to be angry about how how All-Stars 3 worked out. So it's like, hey, we're just going right into the next season so we can erase that, um, the hurt for Shangela and go right into a new group of queens that that's, you can get invested in. That's kind of how it reads right now. That's how it feels. Maybe because our feelings are hurt and we're still, you know, trying still to... Still smarting from that. Still processing the result and how things worked out. And I know our therapist appointments are going to be really boring for them this week. No. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of drag race feelings. Kidding? I don't go to we have, we have so much to unpack, but... Talk space. My talk space therapist is going to be very bored don't by my give conversation. give them free advertising. <laughs> they got to pay for that. I was going to say, we don't have our Patreon set up yet for yeah. them to give us free text message so, therapy. <laughs> so just put that out in your back pocket where it belongs. Yeah, save it for later. Got so, it. So, workroom. It's, it's gotten rid of all of the demons. They've gotten the <laughs> Fifi O'Hara ghost that haunts it at night to leave. <laughs> it's got a new paint job. We've got our same pit crew. And now we've got a whole bunch of new queens that we need to judge and talk about. What I think is most striking that I, from my perfunctory research yeah. that I noticed, is that everybody has a connection, or at least this season has a connection, to someone that has competed on the show or is a drag queen that you have heard of before. Yes. There was a lot of um, house relations. Yes. Like Vanderpump rules. Everybody sort of knows each other and it's this weird sort of incestuous thing. Like once you're on this scene, then everybody kind of is one degree away from knowing Kevin Bacon. Yeah. (laughs) Like how many more queens are there that won't be connected to people we've seen are going to be on the show? We're part of drag houses. Yeah, you know what I mean? I feel like we're getting to we're getting to a point where there's been they've made stars out of over a hundred queens on this show. So at some point there's gonna be some overlap, you know. It's not like there are millions and millions of drag queens. Right. In this country. But it took ten seasons to get here, and so I'm just sort of noticing a pattern. Yes. There's not, no shade. None, not, not yet. No, not yet, no. Just We haven't seen them just yet. Just a casual observance, and it's just, you know, it's been on for that long, and now we have these natural threads that are starting to cross over. Yeah, so, well, I think we're just going to go alphabetically through the queens. And just sure. sort of give us our impressions of them, you know, because... 
I should hope that all of you have watched everything <laughs> that's been about this show. All three things. There was the Facebook Live interviews with Sasha Velour with each of the queens, which uh-huh. was not, like, she wasn't really that great an interview in that moment. I felt like she was kind of hemmed in a little bit, <laughs> maybe by what they needed. But you got a little bit more of the personality of each queen from watching those. And there was, of course, the Meet the Queens videos, which they do every season. Um, and uh, I believe there was just the trailer. It's really all that we've seen of these queens. There were two trailers. There was the... the two, there was a the short trailer and a super one. trailer. Yeah. There was the like the announcement trailer that was during All Stars, and then they released the long season long trailer. So that's what we had from the show to get to know them. But of course, there's you can look up there's videos of, of, of recently in the last couple of weeks a ton of YouTube videos for each queen have gone up. Well, they've all been uploading more performance stuff for them because they'll get more views and hopefully they've monetized their YouTube accounts. Well, they're probably planning on a surge of interest in mm-hmm. them since so, the new season is fast approaching. If you were going to be looking up these queens, there's uh, quite a bit of material for you to at least get a gauge of their performance style and what they'll be like and their chances on the show. You can go to Instagram and look at their looks. Oh, yes. Some of them, you can tell who's relied on Facetune and who hasn't. Yeah, isn't that how we kind of cracked the Aja case? <laughs> I'm last wondering season? who it's going to be when we like see more of them on the show. Who's going to be the Aja this season? Where? Well, from the Meet the Queen videos that I saw, I thought that everybody's makeup was pretty spot on. But we had that same feeling the last time. I guess. But because maybe they recorded that after, and Aja had already like improved her makeup by that point mm-hmm. because she looked way better in the those Meet the, Queens, Meet the video. Queens videos than she did when she came on the show, where the makeup was kind of chunky. And not well blended, Harsh. and like the lips were like overdrawn, and and not in a cute way. And yeah, so it was like, mm, what happened? And they even made a point of it in the show that like, oh, when people see you in person, they could get a little disappointed. Shade, for shade. <laughs> All right, well, who's the first queen? Because we got a whole bunch of these. So there's Aquaria. Aquaria, obviously, her Instagram is Age of Aquaria. Because like, is this the dawning of the age of a? No, I don't think it will be. I don't think so either. But I have a feeling she's going to go pretty far in the show. Why? Because she's related to Sharon Needles? There's that, and she's already mentioned it, which means that there's already, like, an association of somebody who's probably, like, one of the most creative thinking queens that's ever won the show. And, you know, and their way they interpreted each challenge and the diversity they showed in their performance, I feel like that's a good person, except for, like, you know, the fact that, like, half... The people who've seen her think she's a racist in some ways. But Sharon? I, yeah, because okay. she's but she's a, kind of an iconoclastic type of person, so I think she always... She's the kind of person who will say things to get a reaction from people, and I don't think RuPaul believes that she's a racist, or RuPaul wouldn't keep giving work or following her or commenting or talking to her, well, however much she talks to Queens, which isn't very much. But <laughs> I don't think so. Um, but she's supposedly... Sharon Needles is supposedly Aquarius' mentor, um, she has said she has a close knit fit drag family in New York City. The p- voice and the personality that I was getting from like the interviews that I've seen was almost a little bit milky. Oh, I was getting some pearl because I was like, when she said that she was high energy, she's I, a milky pearl. <laughs> well, when she said she was high energy, I laughed. I was like, girl, if you're high energy, so am I. It was weird in those videos because she didn't come across it, but when you look up her videos, she is very high energy in her performances. Okay, because I felt like so, from like, her interviews, I was like. She seems, she's giving me some pearl, like, half asleep. Yeah, but, and then when you see, like, the lip sync videos that she's done in clubs and stuff, it's like, oh, she's, like, jumping up on tables and, like, doing interesting songs that you don't, like, one of them was, a uh, uh, Eartha Kitt's I Wanna Be Evil. It was, like, a really fun song to do a lip sync for, and she really gave, I was like, okay, I can see why she's popular, because she's kind of, like, in a sense, like, the Aja of this season, in and that way- she's, like, the toast of New York drag right now. I am actually most interested to see her looks because she apparently went to fit in New York mm-hmm. and she seems to serve a lot of different she does she she looks like she likes to experiment with fashion and I'm just yeah. curious to see I have high hopes that she'll sort of deliver on some interesting yeah. runway challenges. You know she's had all her hair lasered off in her face and chest. Oh. She consistently has it lasered off so she doesn't have to shave at all. Okay. And she does seem to have some amazing makeup skills from what I've seen. And fashion-wise, yeah. she actually walked for Nicola Formichetti at London Fashion Week. Oh. He, you know, but I was like, oh, this person, I mean, some of the makeup you see on the Instagram is like Nina Bonina Brown level illusion 
like full transformation illusion into something weird natural or like it was there was some very impressive stuff i know her website also is one of the more professional websites of all the queens this season like it's all up to date very you know high value and the (laughs) the images it doesn't look like a cheaply produced website and it's like gigs booked the rest of the year she has a calendar like every week the whole year she's working she's and then we'll be at oasis and sf june 2nd very close to around the time the show is going to be getting towards its finale interesting timing and already has gigs booked the rest of the year as opposed to some of the other queens who seem like they're a little newer to not as seasoned or at least don't have that much of a following but aquaria has a very big following online she already did before she joined the show yeah so she was very insta famous as well very well known in the drag scene in new york and like i said her gigs are all over the country before the show even starts so i feel like just having there's something that's known when she got back from filming that it was like oh I can book anything, anywhere. Yeah, because in her Meet the Queens video, she had mentioned that she wanted to expand out of New York. That was her goal from getting on the show. And she and already... And so if you're saying that her gig's already booked across the country, then it sounds like she made it pretty fucking far. Yeah. So, all right, cool. And San Francisco has a habit of having queens here when their show's... A- when the ep- some episode concerning them airs. So, like, that may be, like, the week she's, like, eliminated pretty close to the finale. So I'm just getting a vibe that she's going to go pretty far. Um, That's my vibe so far. So who's the next one we have? I believe it was uh, Asia O'Hara. If we're going alphabetically. I believe she was your turn. Oh, well, you know what I did? What did you do? I went off of a different article and not this one. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) So you didn't do Asia O'Hara? No, but we can... From the House of O'Hara? No. The mother... Of Fifi on the show after Fifi was already on it. That is a weird. That's a weird flip flop. It is a very that was a very strange for me too. Um, real name. Oh, we didn't even mention Aquarius real name, but like I said, you all should be able to look this up. Giovanni Palandrani. What? That's Aquarius real name. Okay. Only twenty one years old. Right. And already has that kind of following. That's very impressive. I think to have built that so quickly because she couldn't have been. Performing in drag longer. Well, how could she only? She can only go to bars now. <laughs> Technically, I wonder if she started getting a following by doing makeup and stuff on Instagram first, and then translated it into like club success. <sighs> I don't She's know. Another I'm, honestly, I'm sure we'll find out all about it. But yes, uh, Fifi's drag mother, Asia O'Hara, um, was next on the list. Dallas, Texas, thirty-five. She's one of the old queens, quote unquote. I think Mayhem is the oldest queen, though. Oh yes, that name. Why did you Why did you know that name, uh, Mayhem Miller? <laughs> because when I googled Mayhem Miller, I got a, the MMA fighter who was arrested for holding his wife or girlfriend hostage in their home and it was like a whole big mess and he was the first thing that came up and the very first thing that you see in images is his, <coughs> is his mug shot and I was like huh that is decidedly not a drag queen <laughs> so uh, I went up to the google search bar and added the words drag race and got exactly what it is that I wanted but Mayhem Miller's name is also sticking in my mind because she delivers this hilarious little tidbit that her name is based off of Tommy Lee's tattoo because she watched <laughs> Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson's sex tape and he has Mayhem tattooed like right above his dick, I guess. Yeah. And she thought that to be funny and that's her first name. That's her first drag <laughs> name, I mean. Excuse me. That is too good. I love I, it. That was a really great story and she tells it really well. So that's why I also pegged her to be a front runner as well just based on her Meet the Queen video. In the subreddit, she's getting a lot of love too. She seems to be already kind of a favorite for a lot of people. I've noticed I haven't seen anybody really... I think it was the look that she had um, in some of these interviews. They weren't kind of impressed with the look there, but everybody, like, feel like, oh, no, like, in her drag career, like, she's amazing, and I'm getting good vibes from her online. Yeah, I also read a weird, interesting little tidbit that her... Raven and Morgan McMichaels all have the same drag anniversary. They all started doing drag on the same day, which is like May 5th, 2002. Oh, really? Yeah, so she's a staple at all those WeHo clubs that Morgan's a staple at as well. So they all know each other. 
that okay. way. Okay, so there's there's that also. Yeah, Mayhem seems like a kind of a total package from all that mm-hmm. I saw. Yeah, there's like I said, that there's, you get that vibe like okay, she's not really going to be bad at any challenges. This is going to be a like a valent. It's going to be like a Valentina moment, not that dramatic, but something. It's like a self confidence thing in one I was moment. Say, like she's just she's she confident but not cocky. Yeah, she just maybe just has a slip up and doesn't know how to deal with it in the moment. Yeah, I, I also is just, the vibe I get. I appreciated that in her Meet the Queens video that she also said that she's there to compete. It's, it was really refreshing to hear versus mm-hmm. like uh, calorie carb dashian who was like, I just want everybody to think I'm nice. Didn't Pheromone say that in her Meet the Queens video? I was getting shades of Pheromone too. Right? Oh my God, thank you. I was getting Pheromones, Pheromones. Yes. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So It was well, like there's... Pheromone meets Roxy Andrews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I also looked into, like, Blair St. Clair. Right. Who is adorable, and I love her style. It's very vintage, sort of like, there was a little vintage housewife kind of feel to the look that she was a wearing and what Stepford we saw. A little wifey, if you a will. A little bit, yeah. Um, she says, she's from Minneapolis, where BB's from. Oh, okay. Or BB lives, and she's not actually from Minneapolis. Right, but, we, you know. Cameroon! But she was a case where she seems like her drag career isn't quite as advanced as um, Aquaria's, even though she's a year older than Aquaria. Okay. Um, but it's like her website, for instance, has no dates listed at all for her tour. Interesting. There's no performance dates at all listed. Like, she hasn't even gotten to the point where the website has been updated with that information. And on her Twitter, she even says, like, oh, I'm going to be better about posting when I have shows, and... I'll try and like I'm improving on the it's just like it, I'm getting like not baby queen but like you're not as far along in terms of your career as some of the other people you're competing against which doesn't lead me to believe that she's going to be able to um, get into a performance zone because when I saw some of her lip sync performances they were also seen mostly it seemed mostly like her walking around collecting money <laughs> from people like a lot of people were oh. giving her tips. And these shows, she was getting a lot of tips, but she was really, the performance was mostly just walking around and taking the money from them. Isn't her thing, like, singing or, like, theater? She said she was, like, yeah, she said she was, like, musical theater, old Hollywood style. She can sew, she can sing, she can dance, she can act. She said she's kind of like a Broadway baby ingenue, kind of like, I mean, I'm getting all of that from her, but I'm also not seeing, like, the level of performance that's high enough to win. So I'm not seeing her going past, like, the midpoint at most, really, at this point. You don't, you don't envision she, her stepping her pussy up? Not unless she, like, some form of adrenaline kicks in and, like, pushes her to the next level. I think that I'm not seeing it yet. Okay. I would love to be surprised because she seems very sweet. Sure. <coughs> Let's um, not get too attached now, dear. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we may have to put a bell on her. <laughs> We do every season. I mean, on someone, not her in particular, obviously. There's always somebody who needs one. Just always one. And hopefully a Shady Queen hides it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, uh, that was the impression I got from her. Did you did you look into Dusty Ray Bottoms? I did look into Dusty Ray Bottoms. Let's hear some more about this Dusty Bottom. I actually think that Dusty Ray... Well, something about Dusty Ray Bottoms' look in general that she wears in the promo materials kind of strikes me as, like, Acid Betty a little bit. Yes. And she does describe her look as, like, glamorous and trashy, which I feel is something that Acid Betty also had used to describe And we've herself. heard, like, you know, Alaska said the kind of same thing, and Chi-Chi kind of said the same thing, and... Not, they're obviously very different styles, too. Right, but it's all sort of, it comes down to saying the same thing about yourself, but you yeah. just kind of tap into different aspects of what that can mean, depending on where you're from and what your background Even is Even Magnolia like. Crawford said that. Really? She called herself, like, the glamorous trash queen. Okay. Yeah, I she, don't I don't recall that being accurate, but I'm going to take your no, word she, on it. No, she said it about herself, it okay. just didn't come true. So, Dusty Ray Bottoms is a New York queen by way of Kentucky, and she's a drag sister of Alexis. Why didn't you tell me this dress made me look bad, Michelle, from season nine fame? <laughs> Does not bode well for her chances. Uh, Dusty also moved to New York to pursue acting, so we can expect to see her excel in some acting challenges, or at least hope to see her, or she's going to Or she could be like um, fail hilariously. Robbie Turner and Aww. be like, oh, I'm really good at acting, and then every acting challenge... Like, she got in her head and failed. Or be more like Max and just be, like, weirdly theatrical in the wrong spots. Yeah, the, on the runway <laughs> instead of in the challenge. Um, I'm trying to see if there's... Yeah, you know, she 
has even though she is 29 at the time of the filming yeah uh she only started drag four years ago from what i could surmise between all of the info that i could put together mm-hmm. i don't really know how sizable her following is but it's enough to book gigs i don't go as deep as you and double check the website but from everything that i saw it seems like she is still in the starting out germation phase yeah. <laughs> and hasn't really fully blossomed um, I don't know. I'm getting kind of middle of the pack vibes a bit as well. Also, yeah. That's what I got when I started to. Because also the illusion, the full illusion of the um, makeup wasn't all there for me. I would agree. I mean, I like the dots yeah. on the eyebrows. Like, I think that's an interesting signature. But beyond that, the whole, the head to toe look, I don't really know. I'm, I'm waiting to see more looks. Another one, yeah. Like, I'm, to see if there's something more there. And of course, there's Eureka, but we all kind of know about Eureka. The interesting question with her is, do you think she'll be a front runner from the get-go? Or will she kind of be in the same position as she was the last time? But she wasn't really ever in the bottom the last time. She never had a lip sync. She was never the worst. I don't know how often she was the best at something, but we thought that Cynthia Lee Fontaine would have an edge Um, because she'd been in the competition before when she was brought back in season nine, but that didn't work out for her. So I'm wondering if it's going to work out for Eureka. Eureka does, though, in all the interviews, she seems not quite as, like, she's pushing as hard to sell a personality. It seems like she seems a little more comfortable in her skin in terms of who she is as a performer. Like, before, it was, remember, it was just, like, tagline after tagline after tagline after tagline. Yeah, she was trying on different personas. And it feels like now, it's like, I feel like I see more of, like, herself in the way she presents herself. I've seen, like, a more authentic Eureka. Because maybe she, something about that experience, like, maybe it was, like, you got your jitters out. I, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. You pose a good question. I'm not sure. I think that she does have an edge. Whether or not she knows how to use it, I guess, is the different question. Yes. Will she be another Kennedy? It's like, will you make the most of all your gifts? But I feel like she can. I also think so, Because she pushed so hard. Like, she wasn't even the bottom in a challenge where she had a fucking busted leg. Yeah. She wasn't even... She probably... Like, she was she didn't even good. Want, she didn't even want to go home when her knee was fucked up. I like, mean, I feel like I she feel pushes like that through. work ethic, it can go a long way. She managed to help Pheromone put her costume together and, and make she... her own dress. I, I think that she has a lot of potential to go far. And I think that she also has I kind of have an emotional gift. rooting for her kind of, too. Me, too. I think that she also is has the ability of taking a critique and then building upon it for a positive. It didn't seem like she was ever super defensive about a judge's critique. She was more defensive with the queens, but... Somehow having that experience of going through all of it, like, okay, I've done the whole social media thing building up to the show, and then I had to leave not because I was bad, but because I was injured and they couldn't legally keep me on the show. <laughs> right. Well, basically, you know? like, circumstances sort of beyond her control. So it's like there's no sort of, like, oh, I screwed myself up, and that's why I left kind of feeling for her. So maybe she'll be able to ride, you know, that wave. I don't know. It feels like she's been riding it um, pretty well through this go round. so... I don't know. I I think that she's going to go far unless she screws herself over somehow. Let's her inner saboteur take over? Yes. Should she have one? See, we also didn't really get to know her that well, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of what she has to offer. Yeah. I don't know. We'll get more I of have, her story now. We're both rooting for her, I think. To Wrong m- podcast title. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm no, so we tired. are, but we are. We totally are, though. I don't know. I just, I, I get like a warm fuzzy like I want to see her do well I think it's because we both recognize that she works really hard because we've seen it and she's got the talent and she made the most out of her short period before she I mean she busted her fucking ACL that's no joke like that's a big time injury yeah (laughs) that's like what football players get and then they're out of commission forever I mean not forever but you know what I mean like a year they can't go back to just doing that and like so I, I also hope that she knows how to take better care of herself Rooting for you. Go, Eureka. <laughs> All right, what's up? Calorie Next. Carb Dashian well, Williams. I had already sort of mentioned a little couple of highlights about her. She wants to be known for being nice. Uh, her name is obviously a play on the Kardashians because she loves the Kardashians, but she never felt that she would be able to be welcomed into the family. So she per- she puts on this persona of like their full bodied evil stepsister. And there's 
that's kind of it. Like she's just known for serving body yaddy yaddy. She kind and of has a little rock. A good mug. She does. She has a lot of Roxy to her. I feel. I feel like I'm almost getting like a uh, James Mansfield vibe. Oh really? Like that kind of like one of the first couple to go home. Oh, definitely that. But I don't even think I don't know if she's like as like nervous. someone who's got like all this like talent, but maybe like on the show it's not showing because we didn't get a. I got a vibe from James that she was completely nervous and like freaked out and right out away. of her comfort zone. I don't get that vibe from Calorie. I just kind of get that she's like a nice person and okay, and that's that can dance and like you you know we both say like great all queens should be able to dance. And entertain them that way, or at least like be able to fake it enough to yeah. be entertaining in some other way. So if that's your claim to fame, great. But I don't really see that working out long term as a yeah. shtick. I'm not seeing longevity on season ten. Right. All right, you're up. Uh, okay, so we've also got Cameron Michaels, who was the zaddy of this season, by far, hmm. fucking hot. He's like muscly, built, beautiful. I got lost looking him up. Margot is fanning me right now <laughs> because I'm about to faint from the heat. Oh, His you're, Instagram. You're so thirsty. There's a glass of water right next to you since you're mm. so parched. Before you continue on. There you go. <sighs> Hydrate yourself. It's important. Mm. Oh, my God. His Cameron Michaels' Instagram is straight up gay thirst trap. <laughs> like, <laughs> I... Where's my phone? <laughs> like, lots of shots of him in his underwear with his really muscly body. And clearly, I believe when he says that, he, that this is all naturally done, it's not like I did a bunch of, like, steroids and weird things oh, right. to get built. Because he said, like, he didn't show before and after. He's like, like, he's like, this is my before from, like, four years ago. And this is where I am now. Maybe don't, and you don't see, like, a huge, giant difference. But I'm way, way more toned and I had to work really hard for a long time to get to this level. Um, you know, and he's like apparently planning to do like fitness videos, like diet and fitness like series, like on his Instagram. Not something you have to pay for, okay. but something that you can just watch for free. And he just really wants to help other people be healthy and fit. And sort of his thing is that he's sort of um, blurring the lines between masculinity and femininity because he is a muscle queen, kind of. Oh, okay. You know, so that's kind of the thing that he's going for. Um, he says he's a chameleon, and you know can like do anything which I kind of believe because I've although I got a tiny bit of like too much man through the makeup sometimes in the mm-hmm. look um but he says that that's part of the look okay and if you know I feel like if people are going to be uh accepting of everybody doing drag and being eligible to be on the show then I feel like there should be no complaints about his makeup throughout the whole season as far as I'm concerned we'll see what Michelle says right we'll see what she says because Michelle has kind of a narrow view of how she critiques these queens right and he calls himself the bodybuilder Barbie oh that's cute he was a fantasy gamer okay like it's like he went from fantasy gamer to bodybuilder Barbie okay and which is a very interesting journey mm-hmm. um he's also very active online like very big on the social media has lots and lots of followers because it's a thirst trap Instagram for real I will have to start following. You will. He's fucking beautiful. I'm just like, I don't even care if he wins or not. I just want to make sure he's in the public light always. That's all <laughs> we need. This is a public service announcement. Keep Cameron Michaels in the public light forever. Also, one of the few who had a very professionally produced website. Okay. Very complete. All the information you need. Gigs booked the rest of the year. Appearing in- at Oasis June 9th. Interesting. So after Aquaria. After Aquaria. The week after Aquaria. Very close to when the finale of this show. I don't know that that's going to be the date of the finale for sure yet, but it's going to be around that time. So I'm like, huh. I'm liking, I'm liking the flavor of this tea. Yeah, right. I'm like, okay, maybe we'll see a lot of camera. I'm like, this is when they need to go back to showing the queens what they're still like in their boy drag, getting ready and showering at their hotel rooms or doing yoga or whatever. We need lots of shots of Cameron Michaels doing that, working out. If we have to endure watching clips of. Model testants on America's Next Top Model doing yoga or sit-ups or whatever. We should totally see this dude do a couple squats or whatever it is that he does. Mm, we'll all enjoy it. So, uh, I think, from what I saw also, he seems very comfortable in um, the way he's talked to everybody. Like, there's not a lot of tension. It seems very comfortable with who they are, you know, like, in the who they present themselves as in drag. So, I do see this person, I think, going going quite a ways 
okay. the possibility is there because the cafe sf is like not posting their uh the appearance schedules for the viewing parties anymore i noticed on their website oh really i'm wondering how much this is due to people getting sick of things being leaked and then being confirmed by performance schedules because <laughs> huh. that club gave the shit away every season i know it used to be our time i knew who our final three was just i didn't have to go digging through the spoiler subreddit or anything because i rarely visited it i I just got it from that the the club schedules make it easy to kind of make you do the queen math as to who's coming Mm -hmm. who where and when sometimes we got it wrong but mostly it was right mostly it was right so i think that the that research is leading me to believe Cameron Michaels might be there for a while because you know lately they do love to keep the hot out of drag boy in the show for a long time like Pearl was one of the hottest ones kept kept Pearl around and it sounds like Cameron has a little bit more to offer than Pearl did yeah thank you for performance finish. quality thank you for finishing that sentence for me <laughs> you're so welcome that's what I'm here for I love you love you mean it um so we already talked about Mayhem Miller yeah there's but not... what about Ms. Cracker I didn't Get to or, um, <laughs> I got Monique Mo- Hart. Oh, Monique. Oh, give me some Monique Hart. So there's not really much to give. It would feel like she is fairly new to drag, but I'm, I was not able to corroborate when she started. But I feel like she should have gone with her original name that she wanted to go by, which is Cut a Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved that. But apparently, Cut a Bitch. Sa- but, Shantae, you stay. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, her Cut a Bitch Miller. She would stop, she stopped the Miller last name because her drag mother is oh nope never mind oh my goodness I'm so sorry I just got my wires my wires on my queen bitch crossed. what did you do <laughs> uh, it was gonna be cut a bitch heart I'm sorry I was thinking ahead or back should I say to Calorie Kardashian because it should be noted that she is also an Albuquerque queen which I wasn't sure if that was a first or not I don't think it is. Okay. Well, great. <laughs> Blair St. Clair apparently is the first Indianapolis queen. All right. Well, what about Kansas City? Because that's where Monique cut a bitch heart <laughs> is from. I think there's been some KC, P- Kansas people on there once. I thought so. But she's... Oh, no, that was Wisconsin. That was Max. Oh, right. Was it Wisconsin? Ma- Max was from Wisconsin. Oh, it was, it was like Madison, right? I, I don't remember exactly. I just remember them saying, like, where are you from, Max? She's like, Wisconsin. Oh, goodness. I'm like, oh. Wow. That yeah. fucking dramatic queen. <laughs> Maybe she is the first. Can- I don't remember any other Kansas queens, though. Well, all I know is that Cut a Bitch is originally from New York, but lives yeah. in Kansas now, which I thought was a strange flip flop. Because you would assume. Wasn't it for work or something, though? College. She- yeah, she went there for college. But then just stayed when you're from New York. Like, is the-, the Phelps family really that great to have nearby? Like, why did you stay? I really don't know. And she doesn't Maybe really she built get a community it. there that she's very happy with. You great. Know? I'm happy for her. Good for you. Make Kansas City more gay. I support you. But it really, you know, there wasn't really a ton to go off of. She's a, a, a looks queen on a budget, which mm-hmm. we've seen before, which to me also spells gone in the middle at some point. You know, not first to go, but definitely not lasting very long. She seems yeah. very sweet. And I really liked her look in her Meet the Queens video. And she said that she wants to be the heart of season 10. And that's what she wants to be known for, which is fine. Hopefully that'll come to pass. Or will it be like Tyra Sanchez thinking she's America's sweetheart? And then someone having a clock and be like, if you're America's sweetheart, America needs a heart transplant. Or she gets eliminated second. It's like, how could you be the heart of season 10 when you weren't really there? That heart stopped beating real early. So it's kind of hard to tell, but I would say that... She's not long for this world. There's just if some... your goal is to be the heart, yeah. Between calorie and um, there's a competition for Miss Congeniality brewing. I know right between now. Kennedy and Monique, and yeah. it's kind of weird that there are two queens that want to be known for being nice, which I think is odd. And they're also both body queens too, hmm. body look queens. So I feel like they will be sort of in the same pool, competing mm. against each other. They'll have the same talents that will be up against each other. And yes. Be like, who did it better on that day? Kind of, yeah. It might. Them. It honestly might just come. There'll probably be a lip sync between them. I would not be surprised. Yeah. Well, we do also have Ms. Cracker, who is one of the older ones at thirty-three, also a New York queen. Is she the one that's also got like a gold medal or competed in like karate at the Olympics or something? Wait, did she? It's either her or another queen that you had, but there but was. I know that she was um, like her drag mother is Bob. Oh right. She's the one whose drag mother is Bob. 
Um, and so, like, Monet Exchange is kind of, like, related also because she's part of that same kind of family. Oh, okay. So it's, there's, like, a trio of drag race, drag race family there. Um, she is, <laughs> she has a YouTube channel called Review with the Jew, <laughs> where she reviews drag race in a comedic way, as they say. Um, apparently, she gave Sasha Velour her first booking in the, in Manhattan. Oh. That which she thanked her for. She's like, you were the first one who gave me a booking in Manhattan because all that Sasha could get was Brooklyn gigs. They, hmm. But Manhattan gigs were not coming her way. But Ms. Cracker was the first one to do it. But she is, she does have a black belt in karate. Yeah, she, in her um, Hidden Tricks video where they asked every queen what their secret talent or trick was, she said that she went to the Olympics and has a black belt in karate. Like, went to the Olympics for karate or whatever. I don't think they have karate in the Olympics. They have judo. I could have sworn that she said the Olympics in karate in that video. Mm. We're going to confirm that by the end. I've got to confirm this information, this tea. I've got to keep it hot. Because I don't remember if she went to Olympics, but she's definitely a black belt. I know that much for certain. So... No, she was not at the Olympics. She was a national gold medalist in karate. She got a medal. I was like a quarter of the way and there. I was like, karate is not an Olympic karate. event. <laughs> hey, we live in the Pacific States now. If you've watched Man on the High Castle, I've got to be respectful oh, of the Japanese culture. Oh, god damn it. Oh, my goodness. It's not even Japanese, but... <laughs> so, carry on. <laughs> Nonetheless, Ms. Cracker. So Miss like Cracker, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I love the way she describes herself as, uh, she's like, well, I'm thin, I'm salty, and I'm white. If that isn't a cracker, then what is? Wow, you know, I, I like that. But yeah, so she's also, so she's related to Bob the Drag Queen, but apparently been doing drag, it says, ever since Bob's marches for equality in Times Square. When was that? Um, this was not that long ago. So it feels like she hasn't been doing drag as long as you would expect. Um... But it says, like, you know, she apparently is also known as a comedy queen. Uh, so comedy queens usually do pretty well on this show. I also feel if your name is Ms. Cracker, you're probably a comedy queen. It's a pretty, but, I mean, it's a pretty good, funny name. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the names this season are very just like, this is my name. Well, only one person has actually uses their real name as their drag name. Like Chad Michaels, but they're not related. Right. <laughs> That's just the way it is, but... Monet Exchange is also sort of part of this family mm -hmm. with Bob the Drag Queen Tell also. Tell me about her, girl. Well, I think she's kind of, I like her a lot already. Um, okay. I just like her in general. I think she's going to be one of the more, like, maybe politically educated uh, people on the show. Um, I thought it was interesting that on her Facebook she posted, <laughs> she may have spilled a little extra tea for this season because she points out that, you know, like anybody calling this, this show races is just stupid. You're stupid because f only five out of the 13 winners of the show have been white. And I'm like, so someone who's white is not going to win this season. So we can eliminate any of the Queens who are not people of color. Like, are you basically telling us like who is going to get eliminated in a large way, which is how somebody said, like, did you just reveal something about how this season turns out? Did she keep the post up? She put it, she posted an image of it on her Instagram. Oh. She, and posted, she posted it on Facebook and then posted the image of her Facebook update on Instagram. All right, then. Is it still up, though? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's still up. So I'm like, oh, and that's what happens sometimes when you read the comments on some of these Queen's posts is you get someone, like, actually pointing out, like, wait a minute, she said five of the 13 winners. Right, because you might read that and just be like, uh-huh, and then move on. But someone picked up on it. It's like, wait a minute. That means you're including the winner of this season in that 13. Interesting. So we're going to have... Well, based on Monet Exchange's resume and look in the promos, I feel like she's going to go pretty far. Yeah, she kind of has that vibe of like, I'm going to steamroll a bunch of you because I'm that much better. And not like a confidence, like arrogance kind of thing. It's just like very confident in who she is. And, like, knows what she's got to offer and got a, seems to have a pretty wide variety. Um, supposedly also has an opera, a degree in opera performance. But she's like, oh, no, screaming at drag shows for so long, I don't have that voice anymore. Aww. But she's, like, class... She is actually a classically trained singer. <laughs> um, but uh, supposedly she's going to be kind of... They're thinking she's a lip-sync assassin. That if you've been to Manhattan to see her shows... She's basically like, she can do the Kennedy moves, the flip, kick, death drop, pussy pop, splits, everything. 
So she's gonna like, she could be like Peppermint and be like, I'm just gonna slay you. If you're up against me in a lip sync, you better come with a really good performance. You should just bring a shovel to dig your own grave. <laughs> the only person who beat her was Sasha. I know. And that bitch had rose petals and an emotional performance. And all that mask up. and the growl. And it, she, had, she was the only one who could do it. Um, but I I'm think excited to see her lip sync then. I know, right? So we want her to finish at the bottom in challenges so we can see her lip sync. <laughs> at least just once. Or is she going to be like Coco Montrese and it's like, wow, you really can lip sync. <laughs> but can you win? Can you do better in the challenges instead of coming up with crappy excuses for why you didn't do well? I don't get that vibe from this I'm, person yeah, at I don't, all. Yeah, I don't either. So I think that we are going to see some great things from Monet Exchange. Another Put a little fun asterisk name. by her name yes. as a one to watch, mm-hmm. if you will. Her and Mayhem, I think, have some good... I'm getting some good vibes from them. So unless Monet just, like, flubs something or gets in her head. Because, like I said, we don't always know the atmosphere of being on the show can completely ruin somebody's brilliance in a way it sort of dulls it because they can't deal with that environment or being under that kind of microscope and also those meet the queen videos are usually shot as promotional materials after the season has wrapped and you've had time away Mm -hmm. so there's that aspect too that there's been some time and space so some confidence can come back while you've had a break from the rupaul drag race world so maybe that's what we're reading but i feel like based on all that i've seen from her there's a lot going on. We can expect good things. I think that we could at least see her. I mean, I want to see her Snatch Game persona, too. Right. Oh, I know. My Especially God. after sort of like the womp womp of the All-Star Snatch Game. I really need like a pick-me-up. That that was that was disappointing because it should have been amazing like the last one was. <laughs> um, and it wasn't in a lot of ways. Yeah, we don't need to go over that. Who else should we talk about? Um, let's see. We already kind of did Monique Hart. So... We can move on to Vanessa Vanchi Mateo from Tampa, 25. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm so sorry. She is, yes, there is a relation to Alexis Mateo. Not a blood relation, obviously, but, you know. House relation. Yeah, house relation. I think she, that's her drag mom. Um, and her drag mom won, um, I thought she won three challenges. Some of the online things were saying she won four I don't think she won four challenges. She won three on her season, which is still a lot because Sharon won four and she won the whole season on her season. But um, Alexis Mateo always sort of thought that like she wasn't doing as she, the inner feeling was like, you know, low confidence in herself, even though she was doing very well. Like you won a lot of challenges, but you, but she felt like she wasn't getting judged like very well by the judges, but were like, but they loved you and all these other things. So can't be really the case. However, um, <laughs> Vanessa is way more high energy, like, consistently from what we've seen in the interviews. She is, like, very, very, like, loud voice. She was, like, one of the few ones who got up out of her chair and, like, ran around in that Facebook Live interview with Sasha Valore. I'm, like, very, very, like, you can't contain the energy kind of energy. Right. So you think that she won't be able to reel it in when it comes down to it. That could be the case I'm getting from there. Possibility to go far, because Alexis Mateo made it to the top three. I don't know about her making it to the top three. But I don't know that I get that from her, but I see a lot of... Potential? Potential. Like, all the performance ability is there. Like, right there. If she knows how to channel it into each different challenge, then she could go very far. Um, If she doesn't figure out how to do that, then it'll be like, you're gone, like, fourth episode. All right. So a real wild card, if you will. Real wild card. But she does have, you know, she. I love that, like, her credits are like, one Miss Polk Gay Pride newcomer, Miss Southern Knights newcomer. You know what I mean? It's like, she's won a bunch of newcomer things. All right. So I'm like, eh, she doesn't seem to have the polish of, um, when, can I keep it on, please? <laughs> oh, Valentina. <laughs> Um, she doesn't have that level of sort of perfection in the look. Uh-huh. Um, but... You mean, like, the attention to detail. Yes, yes. It's still very good. Like, she doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look... Her style is very different. Um, it's, it is kind of cool. It's a little bit of... Because she apparently couldn't say Banji. That's why it's Banji. Oh, really? That's why. So she's, so she's got... Her style is very, like, Banji drag queen. Okay. 
um, which is very fun. And just hoping that I do think it would be it's going to be tough to follow up Aja though, if you're doing Banshee Queen, right? Because you know I mean? Aja like lived that role. She fucking crushed it. <laughs> she crushed it. Talk about most improved award. Yes. Well, th- then we come to the vixen, right? Who has kind of a mixed reaction from the online um, commenters. That's not really totally surprising because I wasn't really sure I could get a complete read on her. She is a Chicago queen. Bitch, I'm from Chicago. And she says she's a woke political queen. Right. And she was also featured in Shea Coulee's music video, so I have to Mm -hmm. assume that they know each other. Um, Her name stems from her obsession with Vargas girls growing up, and the word vixen was obviously always associated with these images, so she wanted to be the vixen. I think it's interesting that she chose that name, because that's also the name of a very uh, sort of politicized pseudo-porn movie by Russ Meyer. It was called Vixen. It was a very famous movie. It was the first one to get X rating for sex. Um, But it also addressed, like, issues of misogyny and racism in the course of this sort of, like soft core drama basically it's very funny coincidence I'm not saying there's any relationship between her name and that her choosing the well, name well that's a perfect that segue into describing her style which apparently incorporates elements of political art and protest as well as into her performance and she calls herself a vocal woke queen as you had mentioned before And she likes to bring activism and fire to the stage. But she does say that Tyra Sanchez is in like a a touchstone for her, like who she looks up to. But she also describes herself as a showgirl. So I'm not really sure how all of these elements are going to come together. Because she came from the ballroom scene, too, from what I've heard. And like, and you do hone performance skills big time and runway, you know, like she'll have those things. Um, Sorry, people. Um, But. Mm, I don't know. It was something off. There's something a little off in the interviews. I wasn't fully getting all of maybe what she gives, but maybe that wasn't the forum for her to really show that. So I would. I'm very curious to see how she does what she does on the show. I, I think would it agree. would be really welcome on the show. Um, I'd but love now to see we have two politically, it. two politically charged queens. I feel like Cameron. she's more on the more obviously politically charged. Okay. I think the other one is just like you know kind of like they're they've got the right political education okay oh that's what you meant got you it. know kind of like that um but she's like it's very more front and center with vixen yeah we'll see how she incorporates protest and political messages i'm into very her curious drag. to see how she does it I because think they it, didn't really get that vibe just watching her meet the queen's video she just sort of had like a jungle jumpsuit on and like a cool blue wig i wouldn't i mean i guess she seems like she could i don't really know yeah i just didn't pick it i didn't pick up that vibe just from watching her okay but, I am curious to see, like you said, how she incorporates it into challenges and onto her runway look, because I think that, obviously, the forum for showing that off is not a sit-down interview. Right. <laughs> That's supposed to be condensed into a minute and 50 seconds, you know? And so, I, you know, we've... I'm we just waiting. A lot of it... Yeah. I mean, I know that it's kind of, like, lame that we have a preview episode, and then we're like, we're just waiting to see, but, you know, there's only so much we can kind right. of base our opinion off of. There and are some queens that feel like obvious... Front runners, front runners in a way. and people, and then you can kind of sort the middle, the middle pack, and like you can catch a vibe off of certain queens that might not last very long. Just but these looks that they serve us in these interviews that we see are, are not super, good indicators. Yeah, of what just, we're going to get on the show because they're part of a theme and they all sort of look connected and they all are very polished because they need to be camera ready. It's just a little bit different. So so it's, it's we're basing it on our instincts and our research. Do we have one more queen? One more. You're Yua Hamasaki. Yes, Yuha is the only queen to use her birth given name as her drag name. Yeah. She's a seamstress that lives in New York. She moved to the States when she was seven. Is she one of the people who like made like a Bob Bob and Peppermint dresses yeah. in the past. Um, and her last name is actually based off of a um, Japanese pop singer. Oh, okay. So, so she combines those two. She kind of reminds me a little bit of Bianca Del Rio because she's very blunt and brash and to the point. The comic she's, stylings are very yes, Bianca. She seems very funny and high energy. I really liked her immediately. It's sort of like campy sci-fi drag, at least in yeah. her interview. I loved her giant weird like Star Trek sleeves and her hair and like... <laughs> uh, oh my God, I'm blanking on her name from Star Trek, but like her little buns. I thought it was really interesting. Her oh, look yeah. was great. Um, I, I, I get a good vibe from her, too. Me, like, too. Really I good... feel like she's definitely going to go very far. Hey, is this finally an Asian-American queen? Well, I guess, actually, technically, Raja would be Asian-American since he was Indonesian. But... <laughs> of Indonesian descent. But, um, 
it would be interesting to see how far she goes. I I want to see does she incorporate a lot of Japanese style into her looks? She didn't really say that explicitly. It seems like maybe that she does incorporate it sometimes. It, it, I don't really know from the interview and just like the pictures that I see. Sometimes she does drag it up in a more Japanese or traditional Chinese way. Okay. I guess it just sort of depends on the occasion or what she's trying to convey. But the last name she added on later. So, okay. And then it and then it was just sort of random. She just sort of it came to her one day essentially, and she was like, "That sounds good." I just found it really interesting that she likes to use her real name as her drag name. Very. But. I get Bianca vibes. I get fun vibes. I want her to stick around because I feel like she's going to be one of the good Greek chorus members I think of this so. season. Already. She could barely contain herself just sitting in that director's chair trying to give the interview mm-hmm. in general. So I feel like her her energy is kind of infectious, too. Like, I felt yeah. really pumped up after I watched her interview. So... <sighs> Well, we'll just have to wait and see how they all respond to Christina Aguilera appearing. Oh, what a wonderful judge to kick us all off. I actually like this choice, too. I don't know if I, any, I haven't it. heard anybody be really mad about it. Who doesn't it? like Christina? Jerks. I guess. Yeah, nobody that watches the show is like, ew, Christina Aguilera? No. I'm excited. I hope this means that she has an album coming out soon. Me too. Because I like hearing her sing. She's a good singer. Yeah. You gotta redeem Bionic. Justice for Bionic. Hashtag. Hey, she had one really, one really good song on that album. I know. That I liked. <laughs> Candyman? No, two songs. That, no. No, Candyman wasn't on that album, I thought. Was it? Wasn't it? Was it on Bionic? I don't remember. Anyway, I can't wait to see what they do. Probably some sort of Night of a Hundred Christinas, I'm sure. Well, there's gonna be a like, Night of Courtney's in this season, apparently, also. Like, Courtney Loves, because Courtney Love is gonna be on. Oh, my God. I heard. Oh, my God. So we're hoping there's going to be like a Courtney Love themed runway, and we I I'm hoping it happens. I but I'm praying I'm praying on it every night. I'm so excited right now. Oh, uh, some with the exception of Lena Dunham, mm-hmm. I was really excited about the roster of judges that we saw. Mm-hmm. Me, come on, then Johnny and, and his wife, wife, both of them, Emily, Emily V. Gordon. Yes. Uh, they make a hilarious pair. I know that they do watch it together because she tweets about it. So I think that's great. There's so many Can't good ones, wait. and also um. Uh, Broad City. Oh, both of the Broad City girls, uh, Alana Glazer and Abby Jacobson, will be there as well. Which like, is there's didn't, a lot of... wasn't Abby Jacobson in a previous season as a judge, but just her, or was it? I don't think I, so. I thought one of them had been on individually without well, the. Other. We can. Re- I'll review it when I go through the marathon of all the seasons that is airing before season ten starts. Well, you better get cracking on catching up on all those seasons. <laughs> no more sleep. <laughs> yeah, you don't need it. You're fine. I'm fine. I'm doing good. <laughs> but I am still excited. I I, it, I think it's still going to be a fun season. I like to see more of what the workroom looks like. We are all going to see it in a couple days. So I uh, think that we can hold off just until then. I look forward to meeting all of these queens and having another jolly good season. Yeah. I and mean, of it's... course, once it starts, where will you be able to find our musings on this fabulous show? You'll be able to find it right here as long as you subscribe to this podcast, The Shady Ladies, or you follow us on YouTube at Gambit Digital, or you can just follow us on Twitter whenever we upload an episode. We will be better this season 10 promise yes. about telling you when it's live, direct and effect, and you can follow Samir at Samiraculous. You can follow me at Marge She Road, and you can follow the official Gambit Twitter at Gambit Digital, and you can read all of our reviews at GambitMag.com. Gambit Is that it? Yeah. Great. Everything. Perfect. Bye! Bye.